Hi there, I'm Professor Blackmore, and I want to welcome you to ProfessorBlackmore.com, where our goal is to empower results through real productivity. And if you haven't been here before, I want to ask that you please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell so you won't miss any of my tips. And please also follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And I had to come back to you today to review further jaw-dropping developments surrounding the Alec Baldwin shooting on the set of the movie Rust in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I have clips from an exclusive interview with the attorney of assistant director, David Halls. And let me just say right off the top that if the strategy is to throw as much confusion into the chaos as possible, then I say it has been 100% effective. But if you thought the wacky and all out bizarre statements made by Alec Baldwin and his wife this weekend were crazy. And I want you to tell me how crazy you think this interview of assistant director David Hall's attorney is. And if there were not a further strategy of all in all right chaos, you will walk away from this thinking everybody involved in this mess is crazy, including their attorneys. And I really thought I'd be here talking to you about the crazy madness from Alec Baldwin and his wife this weekend. And even though I still don't think the facts will likely lead to criminal charges against Alec Baldwin specifically, if I were him, I would never utter one word about this event. And if I were his attorney, I would never utter one word about it either. But now, not only do we have Alec Baldwin talking, but we have the attorneys for the armorer, Miss Hannah Gutierrez Reed talking. And now we have the attorney for the assistant director, David Halls, talking as well. And you better believe everybody is pointing fingers one at the other. And while I thought some of the facts dribbled out in print by the attorneys for the armorer a few days ago took a bit of the heat off of her, in my opinion. I just don't think the attorney for the assistant director, David Halls, did him any favors. But I'll let you be the judge of this mess. And if you want to fully review what the armorer's attorneys are saying and my opinions about their remarks, please take some time out to watch my prior videos on this topic. And so my top line first glance opinion of the assistant director's attorney remarks is it was disastrous. And you'll remember in my previous video, I explained that the sheriff's affidavit outlining what the assistant director and the armorer told him are in my opinion, nothing more than hearsay. And so I would never get on TV trying to explain hearsay statements that somebody else said my client said. And if I were crazy enough to attempt such a dangerous transaction, it would only be to the extent to point out the statements are in fact hearsay in nature and drawn from incorrect inferences of what my client actually said. And whatever my client did or did not say would not be repeated by me as my client wishes to preserve his or her Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. So now I'm going to go through this interview step by step through some of the questions asked, starting with the first right off the top. And here it is. So Assistant Director David Hall's attorney, Lisa Taraco, joins me now exclusively. Lisa, thank you very much uh, for being here. Obviously, this is a very uh, tragic situation. And you heard in Jonathan's report that the, what we have learned from the uh, investigation, the early discussion that Mr. Hall's had with the investigators, he said that he should have checked. Um, he should have checked that gun more thoroughly to make sure that there were no live rounds in it. Is that do you stand by that statement of your client? Well, I, before we start on that note, I just want to say that this tragedy is overwhelming to all of us. I mean, it's, it's deeply saddening to my client. It's overwhelming to our community here, the film community, and our condolences go out to the Hutchins family. And I think 
it's extra hard for my client because not only is he so overwhelmed with sadness, but now the target of the investigation, people are starting you know, to point fingers at him and it, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. And, is it um, true that there have been a couple of other incidences out. on other sets where his um, oversight was, was questioned uh, in, in other movies and will that be relevant in this investigation? Well, let me go back to your very first question. And your first question had to do with um, the responsibility. And I want to start with the fact that in the affidavits, it states that my client grabbed the gun off of a prop cart and handed it to Baldwin. That absolutely did not happen. That absolutely did not happen. Um, in addition to me presenting not only what Mr. Halls has told me, but we, our defense team, has interviewed witnesses, and some of those witnesses that we've talked to, when we talked to them, they hadn't even been interviewed by the police yet. And those witnesses also confirm that they remember that the armor or the armor's assistant brought in the firearm, brought it onto the set. So this idea that my client grabbed the gun off of a prop cart and handed it to Mr. Baldwin absolutely did okay. not happen. So, so what okay. So I get a few things from these first two minutes on this simple question. And the question that was asked by Martha McCallum is, does your client stand by his statement, the statement that he made to the sheriff, that he should have checked the gun and the bullets therein more thoroughly? But one of the things that you can see that the attorney is doing is that she starts by attacking the truthfulness or the veracity of the sheriff's affidavit as a whole by making it clear that her client did not just pick up the gun from the prop car, which is what was stated in the sheriff's affidavit. So if this is untrue, then the whole affidavit is full of untrue statements. And that is what she's trying to do here. But the problem is that she refuses to say what her understanding is about how her client came into possession of the gun, i.e. if he didn't pick it up from the prop cart, then how did this gun get into his hands? And she also wants to make it clear that the armorer brought the gun onto the set. But she does nothing to help us to understand when the armorer brought the gun onto the set. So when, like earlier that day, 20 seconds prior, five minutes prior, she does nothing to clarify when exactly the armorer brought the gun onto the set. So we still have no idea what happened, but she clearly wants to bring the armorer into the mix to try to muddy the water on how Alec Baldwin came into possession of the gun. Was it her client? or the armorer who handed the gun to Alec Baldwin. And so now we'll look at Martha McCallum's next question. You're saying and is that I Eve, think that it, needs hold on, to let me, let, me, let me just right pass away. on that for a second. So are you saying that Hannah yes, Gutierrez Reed handed the gun to him or that another assistant handed the gun to him? And if so, who, who handed the gun to him? Okay, one of the problems that some of the witnesses have had is that um, most of the crew knew each other but not all of the crew knew the armors. So the armors were relatively new to this particular crew. And both of the armor and the assistant armor were women in their 20s. And so some of the witnesses are getting confused whether the armor came in or the assistant armor. But regardless whether it was the armor that brought the firearm on the set or the assistant armor that brought the firearm on set, my client did not bring the armor, did not bring the firearm. But the point set, is that someone he handed it to it him. Did, did someone hand, did, he, does he know who handed him the gun before he handed it to Alec Baldwin? Well, I think you're twisting the facts just a little bit. And, and let me just back up just a little bit, if I may. Um, the armor brings the gun in. And another really important fact that we've found out is that there was another member of the crew who also checked the firearm. Because when Mr. Halls gives a safety meeting, he announces to the group, we're gonna, you know, there's gonna be a firearm on set, everyone has the right to inspect the firearm as soon as it comes on set before we begin to rehearse or begin to shoot. And so there was another crew member who our team has spoken to who confirms that he also checked the firearm at the time when the armor brought the firearm okay. on set. Okay. So in case you missed it and all of the confusion, 
Question two is simply, who handed the gun to your client, the assistant director? And now, if you remember from my prior videos, one of my questions was, was the armorer actually on the set when the assistant director handed the gun to Alec Baldwin? And so one of the things that I'm beginning to warm up to is that the armorer was probably there and she's very likely not one of the local 44 union member employees. If you remember, the local 44 union sent an email to its employees stating that there were no local 44 union members or there was no local 44 prop master on set at the time of the shooting and there were no local 44 union member employees on a call sheet. And so that began to give me some questions in my mind about the identity of the armorer. Is she a local 44 union member or not? It seems that if she's on the set at the time of the shooting, she's probably not. And so she's a non-union employee hired by the movie to be the armorer on the set. But the attorney is very effective in refusing to answer how her client, the assistant director, came into possession of the gun. So while she wants to make it very clear that her client did not just pick up the gun from a prop cart and that the gun was introduced onto the set by the armorer, she refuses to clarify if her client picked it up from somewhere else. And She's not going to say that because she feels that she needs to tie the armorer to the event by saying that the gun got there or was introduced onto the set on the scene by the armorer. I, I need to just nail something down here. Did Dave Halls hand the gun to Alec Baldwin? That's a very straightforward question. Did he hand the gun that was used and that killed Helena Hutchinson? H Helena Hutchins, did he hand it to Alec Baldwin? or not here's here's what I'm trying here's here's what I'm trying to tell you when I answer a question I want to make sure that it's consistent with all of the facts I don't want to answer a question to you and have and later be proven wrong so we've tried that's why we haven't spoken out for a, over a week is I want to make sure that I've got the facts right I have received information from crew members that the armor handed it directly to Baldwin, and then Baldwin put it inside where his uh, holster would be, and then at some point he he pulled the firearm out and he wanted to adjust um, the holster, and then he hands the firearm to Mr. Halls, who immediately hands it right back after he's adjusted the holster. Other witnesses have said that um, the armor brought the firearm in that they checked the firearm, that, that my client checked the firearm, there was another crew member that checked the firearm, and that she handed it to him like a pass-through, and that he then handed it immediately over to Baldwin because he was between the two. So I can't tell you verbatim what happened. These people are overwhelmed by the grief and the shock. My client went through something that was such a freak accident that he's in shock. I mean, he's having a hard time sorting out. So you're out saying he doesn't know whether or not he handed the gun to Alec Baldwin. Is that what you're telling us right now? He doesn't know if he handed it to no, him? No, of course I'm. No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is I want to put all the facts together. Okay, but you're. you're I want to deal with evidence. You, you said you cannot confirm that it didn't go directly from the armor to Baldwin. And so question number three was Did your client. David Halls hand the gun to Alec Baldwin, the gun that was used by Alec Baldwin that resulted in the death of Helena Hutchins. Okay, so now this is what I got from this piece. Okay, so the attorney says that someone said, and notice she does not say what her client said. This is from someone who said the armorer or the assistant armorer. We don't really know because they didn't really know the armorer or the alleged assistant armorer, but some 20 year old woman handed the gun directly to Alec Baldwin. So now, as you can see, we're moving away from her client actually 
handing the gun to Alec Baldwin. The theory is that the gun came onto the scene because it was brought there by the armorer or this assistant fairy god armorer. But anyway, but we don't know which one and whoever it was, she, the armorer or this assistant armorer, handed the gun directly to Alec Baldwin. And so the theory is, it seems, that if her client was involved at all, it was only because Alec Baldwin needed to adjust his holster. So momentarily, he handed the gun to her client, who then handed the gun right back to Alec Baldwin. So it's not that her client handed the gun to Alec Baldwin in the furtherance of his job duties, but only as a favor. He was just holding it so that Alec Baldwin could adjust his holster. Okay, so this was so much confusion that Martha McCallum tries again. And here's what we get from her second try at this question. So that's what, it, this is a very direct question. Did your client hand the gun to Alec Baldwin right before he fired the gun and shot Helena Hutchins? Hutchins. Did he hand it to him? Was he the last person to touch it before Baldwin? Um, the, first of all, I wasn't there. No, what did he tell you? I can only tell you what my what did client he tell remembers. You about what happened? Did it's he say I handed it to Alec Baldwin? Or did he say I didn't hand it to him? I've explained what has happened on set. The armor brought the firearm into the scene. The armor's responsible to make sure the firearm is safe. The armor opens the revolver, opens the round. My client didn't load the, ra load, load the firearm. My client didn't point the firearm at anyone, and my client didn't pull the trigger. So the armor comes in, the armor opens the firearm, my client looks at it, and uh, one of the other crew members also checks it. Whether or not he handed the firearm directly to Alec Baldwin at that moment, or whether the armor handed it to, directly to Alec Baldwin at that moment doesn't really matter because he didn't load it. He's not responsible okay, for well, checking I, you it. Can, that, that can Asking be your perspective on it, but you know what we're hearing from all these other armors and specialists who handle weapons is that every single person in the chain of custody of the weapon has the responsibility to spin it, to look at it, to check it, from Alec Baldwin to the assistant director to the armor. Now, you're leaving a lot of, I mean, I understand why, as his attorney, you're leaving, um, you know, things as sort of open as you can as this investigation goes forward. Okay, so Martha McCallum's second try at this question is, did your client, the assistant director, Mr. Halls, did he hand the gun to Alec Baldwin right before he fired the gun and shot Helena Hutchins? In other words, did he hand it to him, him being Alec Baldwin? In other words, was he the last person to touch it before Alec Baldwin? And so again, as you can see, the attorney is firm on her position that the armorer brought the gun onto the set and that the armorer was the one who loaded the ammunition, blanks or whatever. So her client did not bring the gun onto the set and he did not cause the ammunition or the blanks or whatever to be introduced into the weapon. So. She's effective in convincing me, at least, that the armorer was present on the set when the shooting occurred. And if you have a different opinion, you can put your comments down in the comments section of this video and let us all know what you think. And in addition to this, one of the key questions to me is pinning down whether the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, was on the set and actually handed the gun to the assistant director, David Halls, in the one to five minutes immediately contiguous to the preceding minute or so that David Halls handed the gun to Alec Baldwin before the shoot. And so all in all, I think I'm warming up to the idea that the armorer was present on the set, but we're not getting any clarity on the question of whether she handed the gun to the assistant director because it seems that the theory is to establish that David Halls did not have any real role to play or responsibility regarding the gun 
that was related to his job duties prior to it being fired by Alec Baldwin. And as clumsy and chaotic as her delivery was, she held fast to her major points. Like number one, for instance, that we were told that her client said that he should have checked the gun. Well, from her perspective, the sheriff's affidavit is full of untrue statements. And whether her client said that or not, his job is that of the assistant director. And he's not responsible for lighting, cameras, props, or anything like that. He certainly would not have been responsible for the gun or gun safety on the set. And then number two, we were told that her client picked up the gun from a prop cart. Well, she held fast to her position that the gun was introduced to the scene because the armorer or the assistant armorer brought it onto the set. Her client didn't cause the gun to be on the set and her client had nothing to do with the bullets or blanks or anything else being inside of the gun. Then we were also told that her client handed the gun to Alec Baldwin, even though we were told that her client himself even said he handed the gun to Alec Baldwin. Her position is, nope, the armorer or the fairy god assistant armorer handed the gun directly to Alec Baldwin. And that's how Alec Baldwin got the gun in the first place. And if her client said that he handed the gun to Alec Baldwin, his involvement was only to the extent that he was momentarily helping Alec Baldwin and he was holding the gun for one brief moment while Alec Baldwin adjusted his holster. And so it seems this was coming together is that people were using these guns to do target practice on the set at some point in time and maybe the prop master and the armorer had no knowledge that this practice was taking place. And so whether the people engaged in this target practice knew these guns were the same guns that were used on the set, or whether the prop master and the armorer or anyone else knew that these were the same guns that were being used on the set, well, this is all unclear at the moment. But it seems that a live projectile or a fragment of a live projectile was lodged in the firing mechanism of the gun, such that when the blanks were loaded and Alec Baldwin squeezed the trigger, the live projectile or fragment thereof came out and killed Helena Hutchins and injured another person. The only thing that we got out of this interview of the assistant director's attorney is more questions, which is what I think her true objective was. So I'll let you decide how you think she did in her delivery and if she met her objective of creating even more confusion. And until the next time, if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and please also subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell so you'll be notified whenever I post new videos on this topic. And please also follow me on TikTok and Instagram.